Great, thank you so much. Um, Okay, good morning, everyone. I would like to call this meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, August 25th, and this is the Westwood School Building Committee meeting. Um, I'm gonna do a roll call attendance. I know Ken is not joining. Uh, Brian Baer? Here. Allison Borchers? Here. Chris Coleman? Here. Sarah Cronin? Here. John Cummings? Here. I don't, oh, Charlie Donahue? Charlie, I see you, but I think you're on mute. Here, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Pam Dukeman? Here. Abby Hanscom? Here. Nancy Hyde? Here. Lemma Jean-Baptiste? Here. Josepha Jowdy? Don't see her. Um, Carol Lewis? Here. Michelle Miller? Here. Tony Mullen? Here. Emily Parks? Here. Amanda is not here today, and Kate Scales? Here. Great. All right, well, thank you, everyone. I would like to recognize the live stream that's available to provide real-time public access to the activities of the School Building Committee. Um, the meeting is also being recorded for later broadcast on Westwood Media Center and as always, we thank Westwood Media Center. Um, okay, so jumping right into the chair, subcommittee and working group reports. So just as an overall project update, um, I confess I can't remember the last time we met. I think it was before we had the MSBA um, facility assessment subcommittee meeting. So I'm gonna give you an update on that. Um, we had that meeting a few weeks ago and this is where there's a the facility assessment subcommittee looks at the site plan and the design to date that we're proposing option seven and provides feedback about what they think looks good, what they think needs some work, what, you know, questions that they don't understand. And we had a, a great meeting with the MSBA. Um, they seem to be very happy with the design. Um, they, they thought it was very thoughtful. They, they, you know, they had a couple questions for us, which our team ex, uh, expertly fielded. And so overall, I think it was a, uh, it went really well. They seem to be very happy, which makes us very happy. And uh, it, it got us sort of excited about the design and, and the project and moving forward. Um, so that's great news. In terms of next steps, tomorrow we actually are on the agenda for the MSBA board meeting. Um, and at that board meeting, I think we, we hope that they will officially approve our um, PSR, the Preferred Schematic Report, which has option seven listed as the recommended option. So that is on the, uh, the calendar for tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, and we will be attending that with Doran Whittier and Compass. It'll be Emily, me, and Nancy, and then Doran Whittier and Compass. So uh, we have that to look forward to. That'll be exciting. Um, and then once we're through that, we are officially in schematic design where we plan to be for the next uh, number of months. And we'll be, you know, sort of going through um, the subcommittees will continue to work. Um, the, the working groups will continue to work and the design plan will be fine tuned. It's already gotten some input from um, principals and some and faculty. There's been a number of workshops over the summer um, that our faculty and staff have been involved in. And, you know, thanks very much to them, considering how much else is going on this summer. We really appreciate them taking out the time um, to, to help us really get this to be the best design that we can. So that's been going on um, and will continue to be going on. And we will also have a couple of community forums in the fall to really um, get the feedback of the community, get the suggestions and, and sort of continuing on what we what we were doing in, in the feasibility phase, which is really making sure that the community knows where we are and that we are um, bringing them along with us and, and in incorporating any feedback that we have from them to the extent we can. Um, so that's a really important component of this project and that will continue into the fall. Um, so that's where we are. Does anyone have any questions? on the update, on the project status? Nope, okay. Um, giving an update on the geothermal test well. So this, as you recall, is, is we, we drilled one well um, to as sort of a test well to see, you know, how, what we would need or, 
Honestly, I don't know enough to explain exactly what it's for. I could turn that to the experts, but I will tell you that it was successfully installed. Um, it had a little minor hiccup with it, with running it, but once we got it up and running, I think I believe on yesterday they started the running it for the two day or three day testing um, that they needed to do to get the results. So once that's testing is complete, they'll get the results and we will move on from there. Um, and if we want, we can get into a little bit further about what the test well does in our next segment. Um, but that's just a really quick update just to let you know that um, the test well has been installed and is currently gathering information for us. Um, all the neighbors have been great. They were notified and updated and, and they've been very cooperative. So again, we appreciate that as well. Finally, um, we have been approached by Westwood Media Center um, who would like to do what they're calling a dedication video on the building project. So this is basically a video that is going to um, you know, capture this project from, from design all the way through to grand opening. Um, I actually think it would be a really exciting thing to have for us and for the town for posterity. <laughs> um, so I wanted to bring it to this group to see if anybody had any concerns or was excited about it or um, what, what everybody thought about that. Um, I know that Melinda is, is excited about this and Connor and, and the rest of the team over at Western Media Center, but I'd love to get other people's thoughts about this, um, if anyone has any thoughts. The great idea. Thank you. Yeah, it is a great idea. What are they thinking of uh, in terms of content? How are they going to assemble information for this purpose? So I think they'll do um, a lot of sort of video clips and sort of string them all together to show, you know, what the um, what the process has been for us. Um, if we'd like more information, we can certainly invite Melinda and Con or Connor to come and just, you know, give us a, a, a five minute talk about what they see it as. Um, the other thing that they can do is provide film tours of the project as it goes along. I know other districts have done that where um, either the superintendent or the chair of the building committee will do a walkthrough of the building on a monthly basis and sort of let the public know what's new um, and then they can actually see for themselves the construction. So I think that's another aspect that they'd incorporate into that dedication video and also do and you know do for us as well. Um, I think you should also talk to the permanent building committee and maybe John Mr. Cummings, you can help with that just to make sure um, they're on board because they, they oversee the project from the town standpoint. Um, so just piece of uh, yep. advice. And so John, maybe you and I can coordinate that at some point. Um, okay, anything else on the dedication video? So I'm gonna tell her that it's a go <laughs> uh, and that'll be a great thing to have for us. Um, all right, we're moving now into the discussion items and two items here. The first is the sustainability options. Um, the sustainability subcommittee met uh, last week or the week before. They're all blending together. And um, we talked about three issues, the HVAC system, um, whether to have 100% AC in the building versus um, partial AC in, in some of the classrooms and the administration and the rest of it having a dehumidification system. And the third item was whether to install a rainwater cistern irrigation system. Um, the sustainability subcommittee did come up with several rec with recommendations for each of those, but right now I'm going to turn it over to Rob, um, our fearless project manager, so he can walk us through each of those options. All right, you're up and running. All right, so you can see that? Yep. Okay. Um, so as Maya said, you know, um, today we're just going to give an overview of what was discussed with the sustainability subcommittee. Um, these are the agenda points. So uh, just providing that sort of general overview, our priority has been the 20% above new energy code to achieve the two percentage points for MSBA. Um, 
in the discussion with the sustainability subcommittee, these are the various sub options for the heating and cooling systems. Um, the baseline of natural gas, uh, tier one was a water source heat pump with a supplemental electric boiler. Uh, tier two is the ground source heat pump uh, for with the geothermal system. And then tier three is the same, except um, instead of having 70 wells, this option uh, tier three has 60 wells with a, a supplemental electric boiler. Uh, and then the last, uh, the last two items are whether to have the entire building be 100% air conditioned um, or partially air conditioned with the dehumidification system. Um, and then four is whether to include a rainwater cistern for, for irrigation. So as Maya said, uh, the geothermal test well was completed. Um, uh, it, was, it went pretty quickly. Um, it's about 600 feet down into the ground. Um, granite was encountered about 10 feet below grade, um, and <clears throat> which actually in, in terms of um, the design of the geothermal system, having granite is a good thermal conductivity, uh, conductor of uh, thermal properties. That way the transfer of the heat and cool um, is much more efficient. Um, so once that thermal conductivity test is done, which is uh, what Neil was referring to, um, that well will be covered and nothing will be seen from uh, when you're walking. It's, it's several feet below ground. Um, so the plan right now is that there would be 70 wells, um, roughly about 25 feet apart. Um, these sort of indicate proximate locations for where these potential fields could go. Um, we would uh, be looking at two of the three. So there's, there's three options, but two of the locations. So um, right here is where the current test well is. Um, this would be one possibility for well fields. Um, this location behind here is another, and then this alternate area in front of this parking area, um, or below this parking area. Um, and, and those kinds of decisions will, will play out as we move forward. You know, there's other uh, competing factors such as stormwater, underground stormwater uh, retention uh, galleries that also need some space below grade. Um, but we're trying to, the idea is we're trying to locate it near the mechanical area, which is approximately this area, this portion of the building. Um, three to four months for drilling um, and uh, can be done at various points during um, construction. So uh, I'm not expecting you to read all the fine print here, um, but this is the basically summary page from the life cycle cost analysis that our engineers did. Um, this green bar in the middle here is the um, annual energy unit um, EUI for each of the options. So um, the option that the subcommittee voted on uh, or voted to move forward with was tier two or tier three. Um, so these both have the lowest EUI. Um, so that's the you know, amount of energy used um, per square foot on an annual basis. So they have the lowest uh, amount of that. Um, and really what it came down to was know that the additional capital cost was a worthwhile investment. Um, it is more expensive than the natural gas. Um, but you know, looking at the life of the building, um, you know, which 70 plus years, uh, the subcommittee decided that it seemed to make sense. And it was consistent with the Westwood's commitment to sustainability and resiliency. Um, the state uh, is moving forward with fossil fuel free uh, direction. You know, there are signs that in the future, uh, they will be requiring all buildings to, to go fossil fuel free. Um, this is an opportunity for, for net zero energy. Um, so this is a significant item in achieving that. And then um, and reduction of global greenhouse gas emissions, um, basically doing, you know, uh, your part in reducing overall greenhouse gases. Um, so it was it was a little bit tough. Some of the uh, decision points 
that were discussed between tier one and tier two. You know, tier one it has a lower uh, upfront cost, but um, one of the significant factors between uh, tier one, which is the water source heat pump, um, and tier two with the geothermal was that the uh, tier one has a much higher sound level. Um, so for tier one, these would be uh, two very large units that would be located approximately um, in that mechanical area that I was just referring to around the gym. Um, and uh, in speaking with our acoustical consultant, uh, they would radiate noise on a constant basis. Um, and so we would need to add additional money to the project to um, try to alleviate some of that noise by building you know, large fences, acoustical fences, if you will, or enclosures around these units um, that still you know, wouldn't entirely eliminate all the noise altogether. Um, and uh, you know, th these units aren't small. You know, these are about 12 feet tall by 10 feet wide by about 30 feet long. Um, and so uh, so the fences around them would need to be even taller than that. Um, so after some discussion, um, the subcommittee decided uh, not to go for tier one and to go for tier either tier two or tier three. Um, on the rainwater cistern irrigation piece, um, there was some discussion about um, you know, the desire to you know, do your part in conserving water. Um, but some of the main issues that, that surfaced was, you know, that number one, you know, this tank that would be underground about 10 to 12 feet below grade uh, would only meet about 15% of the water demand. Um, so you would still need to uh, supplement that with your potable water. It also would uh, require some chemical treatment um, to so that would um, increase you know, annual operating and maintenance costs, um, and then the due to the uh, potential for ledge, uh, which you know, number one was found from that geothermal test, but also from previous borings that we did a number of months ago, um, we there's a chance that. If we're going down 10 to 12 feet below grade, we may run into ledge. And so the uncertainty of the additional costs associated with um, that potential didn't seem to outweigh the benefit of um, providing the, the rainwater system. Um, so for those reasons, um, the subcommittee uh, did not recommend moving forward with the rainwater system. So in summary, um, uh, the tier two or tier three, um, and we'll continue to look at those two options. Um, the, sub, the subcommittee uh, requested some additional information between the tier two or tier three, and that's another decision that will need to be made in the um, within the next month or so, um, so that we can you know, move forward into our uh, and submit our schematic design package with one system um, that's being planned. So we'll be working on that. Um, and, then, uh, and then they also uh, recommended moving forward with 100% AC, considering you know, that uh, we need to be thinking ahead with uh, you know, climate change and flexibility for you know, potential year-round schooling or extended uh, schooling, um, you know, not really knowing what direction things are headed in the future. Um, it seemed to make sense. Um, and with the geothermal system, it, it also makes it uh, much more efficient um, to go with air conditioning. And so, um, it, and, and, and the, the system will still uh, provide the dehumidification throughout the majority of the year. The air conditioning really just kicks in during the warmer months. Um, and so, um, so it's, it's really a, a very little impact in terms of annual operating costs. Um, and then, um, so the total here at the bottom is really our new kind of revised project cost estimate. Um, if you recall, we were at uh, 90.6 moving into schematic design. Um, and with these adjustments and the removal of the, um, of the timber, uh, we're down to 88.1. So that's, 
that's my summary. I don't know if anyone from the sustainability subcommittee or Maya wants to go over any of that. Um, thanks, Rob. I think that was very helpful. Um, just to give a little bit more um, information about our discussions on the subcommittee, um, with respect to the water source heat, heat pump with supplemental electrical boiler tier one, I think as Rob, I think what really concerned the committee and what, what Rob mentioned was the additional cost we would need for acoustically, um, for the acoustics of, of the project, because from what we understand, the the units required for that system they're not sort of the little you know compressors you think of when you think of your house air conditioning they're these huge um huge units that would either go on the roof or, or very close to the building and would require a significant amount of work to the building acoustically to um to you know counteract the the noise they they generate in addition we were um, not quite sure how that would, the noise would, I don't think it would reach the neighbors, but again, we were a little bit concerned about that. Um, and I think that's really, and it also didn't seem to be um, as efficient as, as you notice the, uh, you, uh, the EUI was not, was much higher than with tier two or tier three. And if the goal here is, is a sustainability goal, then that tier one would not get us as close to tier two or tier three. Um, it was a $2 million difference, as you can see, which is significant. Um, and Rob, I don't know if you were able to come up with any um, additional costs around the acoustics. I know that that's something that um, we yeah. had talked about. It was, uh, it actually was $1.1 million to go with the water source heat pump. And after, um, so the, the additional acoustical and structural reinforcing that would be needed for those units is around 400 million uh, 400,000 um so that bumped up the price from 1.1 to 1.5 um but the uh, uh just to reiterate um you know we have a requirement um not to extend uh, additional noise from our property onto neighboring properties that's a state law um and so um in speaking with our acoustical consultant and seeing you know, the proximity of the building to the property line it is a significant concern of ours um, that we would be able to actually achieve that. Um, you know, there's a there's only so much, you know, fencing <laughs> that we can provide. And um, in addition to that, uh, it's not just the neighbors, it's also to visitors coming up the front entrance. You know, that mechanical space is, is right in behind the gym. Um, you're approaching the building, um, you know, that sound is expected to emanate, you know, roughly about 100 feet to, uh, plus away uh, from the unit. So if you can just imagine, you know, you're talking about the cafeteria playground, you're talking about the neighbors, you're talking about the front entrance, um, and it's a constant sound. It's not like, a, um, oh, it just comes on once in a while. It's a constant hum of these units. These are massive, like think of a school bus size um, units. So um, it, it, was, it was our recommendation not to consider that, um, considering the difficulty of the noise, in addition to the fact that they do also um, add significant annual uh, maintenance needs and, and, um, uh, and replacement costs. Exactly. And, and what was less clear to us was the benefit of tier two versus tier three. I know that they're both showing as adding about 3.5 million. I think in the in the other spreadsheet, the tier three one seemed to be about 500,000 less. Um, so there may be some cost savings there. Um, and and Ken Aries, I know he's not on the phone, but he really liked the idea of a supplemental electric boiler. Um, so he was um, very much in, in favor of tier three, but at this point, and Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, at this point, we don't have to decide between tier two or tier three. We can get more information to, at least in my mind, I think I just need to understand the, the distinction between them a little bit more before we make a decision. It's enough to say that we know, you know, we want to go with either one of those options. Yes. At this point, um, we, we will, we will need to decide within the next month or so, um, so that we can finalize our um, drawings and specifications. But um, at this point in time, understanding that we are moving forward with the geothermal is the, the more important piece. Um, so yep. 
we'll continue to get that information we'll report back out does anyone else from the sustainability subcommittee want to speak to um, the thinking on the heating cooling system options uh, yeah this is Brian um, I just wanted to reiterate you know the importance of going with one of these options versus a fossil fuel option you know not only will it be more efficient but um, and Tom Philbin too was in that committee meeting um, it it's it'll give us much more flexibility in the future as the town continues to acquire more renewable energy resources you know having an all-electric building will be able to, for us to, to have more flexibility in supplying the energy needed for this so uh, that's a critical piece of that decision yeah and that's a great point brian as as a lot of you know as you know the town is looking to install a solar array um, in an adjacent property and that solar array could potentially bring all of these you know tier one tier two or tier three all of the fossil fuel options um, could bring the operating costs down to zero. Um, so that would be, you know, with a, we'd have a net zero energy building, which would be great. Maya, there was a lot of talk about how schools are being asked and soon to be required to get rid of their fuel systems. Yeah, so there is legislation that's been sort of proposed and moving its way. Um, within the state about having towns and municipal buildings, including schools, move toward fossil fuel free buildings and systems. Um, and so this, again, would put us in line with that where, you know, I, I don't know if any of this legislation would require retroactive refitting or, um, but if it did, we, you know, we would be, we wouldn't, <laughs> we wouldn't have to deal with that um, with these options as well. Thanks, John. And there with that, you know, as we, as this committee presents to the town, I think we talked about the importance of that, um, you know, although this is a more expensive investment initially, boy, if we ever did have to do a retrofit, it would be nearly impossible and extremely expensive if it was. So it alleviates all that risk. Exactly. And then... In terms of the AC versus partial AC, um, we anticipate that this building being a brand new building, a large space with lots of opportunities for the public as well, will get a lot of use in the summer. I think more use than Hanlon is currently getting. Um, and I, again, I'm gonna invoke Ken here in his absence, but he felt very strongly that um, we should have a full AC system in place, um, you know, Given the increasing temperatures year after year, the humidity levels, um, it just seemed, it just seemed like it, it, it was really, it, it just made more sense to more people um, to make sure that the building can be fully functional. Now, the gym, I don't think would be air conditioned. So the, sort of that large space wouldn't be air conditioned. But instead of having just the admin offices in a couple select classrooms, it would really be all of the classrooms. Um, so that was the recommendation of the subcommittee there. If anyone else has any thoughts on that. No. Nope. And finally, the rainwater cistern, as Rob mentioned, um, it, it, we don't believe it would generate enough to supply water in the months in July, August, September, when we really need it, you know, as we are now, we're currently in a drought, we're limited to one day a week. Um, we think that while we could, you know, collect it in March, um, it's not going to be a full replacement of, of irrigation water. We would still have to tap into town water. Um, and it just didn't seem, um, it just didn't seem to, makes sense at this time, given the, the cost of the project. And, and we're trying to prioritize here. Um, so this seemed one area where we could move away from it. It just, the benefit just didn't seem to justify the cost. And uh, this is Chen. I just want to add that um, the, when we estimated this at $0.2 million, we do not we did not have as much information about the ledge and knowing what we know now, this number will be uh, significantly higher uh, because of the, that we will be uh, uh, dealing with a ledge removal in order to uh, install the system. 
And I just right. want to be cl clarified that, that the cost is likely to be uh, significantly higher than the $0.2 million indicated here. Right. Thank you, Chin. That, actually, that's an important point. And we did talk about that uh, in the subcommittee meeting, that this $0.2 million, um, is likely to, to be much higher. And again, we didn't, w the cost versus benefit, we, we sort of agreed that this was something we could take off the table or, or that the committee was recommending we take off the table. Um, Abby, did you want to, I, th I think maybe you wanted to say something about the AC issue and I may have um, moved us all along. <laughs> before yeah, you gave yeah. <laughs> yeah, I muted, but then it, it I wasn't fast enough. Um, I did just want to say that, you know, from an ADA perspective, it would give the district a great deal of flexibility if we had um, a variety of classrooms and a variety of locations uh, for students to access. So I would just strongly support the air conditioning of all the classrooms option. Thank you, Abby. Yep, a lot of IEPs um, require air conditioning. Um, so again, to Abby's point, we'd have a lot more flexibility if we weren't limited to the two or three classrooms only in the building. So that's, I think, a little bit more about what the subcommittee discussed. Does anybody from the subcommittee want to add anything else or anyone add anything to this discussion? We will be voting a little bit later on these recommendations, so. No? Okay. All right, we're going to move on to um, the discussion about the revised property line. Um, to give you a little bit of background, as you know, the Hanlon School is on the Hanlon property. Um, and you know what, Rob, I'm going to let you speak to this because you, you created these, so I think it would be helpful <laughs> if, if you sure. talk about these maps. Okay, so... Um... This is the existing Hanlon School property down here in the lower right-hand corner. Um, and the remaining from this line up is all called the Shuttleworth property. It's, so areas uh, one, two, and three are all Shuttleworth, correct? Exactly, exactly, yep. Um, and this is dedicated to either municipal or school use. Um, and so the idea, um, so this, let me just explain. So area one is the area where we are uh, planning to locate the proposed new building. Um, area two is the location where uh, the town is planning to build the PV solar array. Um, so this lighter um, gray area it would be the approximate area of the PV panels. And then they need an area around that uh, where they would need to cut down trees uh, to allow um, enough solar uh, I guess. Um, light. Yeah, <laughs> enough, enough, enough exposure, <laughs> enough exposure to the sun um, to, to allow the PV panels to work appropriately. And so their approximate acreage that they're looking at is around 11, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half. Um, it, it's been varying depending on uh, the iteration of their uh, concepts, but it's roughly about that amount of area. And then area three is the remaining that would remain untouched. Um, and so the, the thinking right now is, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe you can um, touch on this, but I think the thinking is that um, in order to expand the, you know, what's really appropriated to the school um, is to provide a kind of a combined property line um, to assist in the permitting process. That's right. So. Um, as you know, right now the property, the Hanlon property ends where that line between the two greens is. Um, for, and now for permitting purposes, if the solar array moves forward and our project moves forward, you're going to have two different projects um, trying to get permitted on the same piece of land, which isn't impossible. We can certainly do that. It's just a little bit more complicated. Um, and so what we were thinking and, and also go for on a going forward basis to clearly delineate what is the school and what are the school boundaries, we thought it may make sense to move that property line so that instead of having it separated between the two greens, it would just be, if you look on the right, the entire green area, the 18.1 acres. That would be considered the Hanlon School property. The rest of it would, would you know, um, 
be the Shuttleworth property and the town would put the solar array on the property wherever they decide to end up putting it. For permitting oh. purposes, that would make it a little bit cleaner because we would permit our property, they would permit theirs, and, and that's how um, it would just be easier. Chin, did you want to add something? Yeah. Uh, I just want to add that that this is at the uh, recommendation of Nora uh, when we spoke to her, uh, Nora and uh, Abby from the planning department that uh, the their opinion is that uh, the uh, the town owns both property and then this is a uh, the referred to as a relocation of the property line from the current property line to the uh, proposed property line, and that would allow it uh, to be simpler and clear in terms of the from the permitting side perspective. Right, and from what I understand, in order to do this, um, this would be a review only. I don't believe um, that town bylaws require this to go to town meeting. Is that correct? Uh, yes, this this is only uh, require a uh, approval, not required uh, applications through the planning process to relocate the property line, um, and the um, because there's no uh, the the it's owned by the same entity, the town uh, on both sides, and then the use there's no limitation uh, for the proposed use, so there's no. Uh, uh, there's no change in that, and there, so therefore, no need for a, uh, it's just a formality of going through the property line change. Right. May I'm not really sure um, why you're bringing this up now. It feels like it's out of context. I know the sh the, well, site is for the well, hold on. The site is for the solar array, but I don't think the permitting is actually for a while. So. This just feels so we bit. have an action item on our agenda to approve engineering costs to revise the lot line. Okay. So I'm not prepared to vote on that today because I wasn't, um, we have to look into what Nora told you. I just wasn't thinking that this was, um, well, I don't feel like this is ready for that kind of vote right now. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Rob, I assume we can push that vote. We don't need that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the idea was that the um, Moresco, I believe, is going to start permitting in December. Um, yeah, December, and so I think the idea was. This, that yeah, there's still discussion taking place at the select board level. Okay. Um, so I again, I, I just think this is premature. Sure. Okay. okay. So yeah. why don't we talk? Be, I, I think we were told, I think at the last meeting that Amoresco was starting in September, the permitting. So um, I think when Chin had his discussion with Nora, the idea was that we we would move, separate this before that permitting started. If that timeline has been revised, that's great because this isn't, you know, our timeline clearly is different. Um, um, so, sorry, we're getting some feedback. If you can, if people can mute if they're not talking. Um, so we can certainly push this action item off and we'll have further discussions on it. Mayor, this is Chris. Could I just suggest um, if, when this is going on the agenda, if, if you could just reach out to me, I can give you a little status to whether or not um, this group, I'd recommend whether this group discuss that type of matter because it still has to go to the select board. And as Nancy said, we have a number of other matters regarding the Shuttlesworth or the solar array that the board has to uh, tend to before we make any final decisions on that. Okay. Um, and I, I'm not sure that this decision necessarily has to be dependent on this solar array project. It may, it makes sense um, for a number of reasons to have to move the property line regardless of the solar array. Um, I think that one of the, con the major concerns was the two projects being permitted on the same project property. But we may want to, and again, we can push this discussion, but we may want to think about doing this regardless of the solar array. I, um, um, uh, this is Chen. I just want to um, point out that the discussion here is, is that to, uh, to um, the, the proposal is to uh, engage the engineer. The exact line is not, uh, we do not have an exact line of where the prop. Uh, where the property line is going to move to, because that's a that's a definite discussion between uh, the, the that the town has to come to a, uh, uh, an agreement on exactly where the location of the line and how it's drawn. Um, this is uh, just simply to, in preparation of 
uh, getting some uh, engineering uh, uh, costs allow, uh, allocated for that. Right. That's, this Good is not point. So this is just, doing the work. Right. This is just simply say, okay, we recognize that we need to do the engineering, and then we get a proposal for the for the committee to to look at, and then this is not drawing the line. And I, I think that, that that clarification is needed here. Yep. And regardless, we can we'll take it off the action items. Um, but but Chin, to Chin's point, it wasn't to draw the line; it was just to engage the engineer for the work. But Again, it sounds like we're not ready to do that, which is fine. We'll, we'll just take it off the action items today and then we can circle back on it later. All right. Okay. Um, so having said that, I'm moving into action items. So the first action item we have is the approval of the sustainability subcommittee recommendations um, for the HVAC system for air conditioning and for the rainwater cistern irrigation. I think this can be all one motion. Um, so it does, can someone give me that motion or I, I'm happy to come up with it. So moved. This is Brian. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. And just to be clear, the motion is to approve the sustainability subcommittee's recommendations for either tier one or tier two for the HVAC systems. Um, for 100% air conditioning and to not move forward with a rainwater cistern irrigation system. Just Can to I clarify, give a, if, yep. sorry, may you said tier one or tier two. We sorry, want to tier, two tier two or, two or, two or three. tier three. Yes, thank you, Rob. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> tier two or tier three HVA system. Um, so Brian has made the motion. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, I'm going to do a roll call. Um, Brian Baer. Yes. Allison. Yes. Chris. Yes. Sarah. Yes. John. Yes. Charlie. Yes. Pam. Yes. Abby. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Lemma. Yes. And Josepha is not here. Carol. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Tony. Yay. Emily. Yes. Amanda's not here. Kate. Yes. And I am a yes. So the motion is carried. Um, our next item is to approve. So this is an invoice uh, proposal for additional geotechnical engineering testing for soil for drainage and environmental testing proposal. Rob, can you give us a little background on this one? Yes. So. Um we did do some borings earlier on in the PDP phase, um, which just kind of gave us an initial idea of where, uh, of what the soil conditions were, but we didn't go quite as far as where we are going now um, in terms of locating the building. And so these uh, borings and test bits, um, number one, the borings are really to confirm um, and, and attempt to locate approximately um, you know, where the ledge is, if we encounter ledge, uh, you know, uh, roughly how far below grade it is, um, understanding that, you know, these are kind of needles going down through the soil. So, you know, um, it'll still be a limited amount of information, but it'll provide us some additional information to what we have now. Um, and then the test pits um, are where we go out and excavate, you know, a larger area of soil. Um, and that is really for stormwater uh, drainage. So when we are designing our stormwater infiltration galleries below ground, we need to know, um, you know how the soil uh, drains out and that'll help dictate the type and quantity of systems that we need to design. And so both of these will help our engineers to kind of further plan and, and design the building. The, the borings are also to assist with soil capacity for, uh, for the structure as well, um, making sure that the, the ground can fully support the, the building that we're designing. Um, and this is Chen. I just want to add that um, the combination of the, these two pieces of work is to get a better sense of what is the shape of the bedrock in order for us to reduce the potential risk of um, 
uh, moving forward. Uh, this is a risk management move as well as the uh, getting the uh, the information necessary for the uh, for the uh, foundation and drainage design. There's a third piece that's in in there that is. Uh, uh, the environmental uh, investigation, additional environmental uh, investigation. In the first uh, phase of the investigation, we are aware of that there were three oil tanks removed, uh, that somebody recalls that, uh, and I forgot whom. Uh, however, there's no paperwork trail, and we do not know that if they were removed completely and or there are other additional uh, issue that we have to deal with. So this is to do additional investigation and try to, again, um, uh, manage the risk that as we move forward uh, on the project. One thing I would just add uh, that I mention is that um, after uh, we get into design development and further into the construction documents after the vote, um, there would be anticipated to be a dish, another level of borings and test bits to further document. So it's a multi kind of phased analysis. This is just like the next step so that we've got some more information um, to position ourselves to you know, putting forward our schematic design package. It's, it's a balancing act of how much money do we spend now and spending, we're, we're trying to hit that point of spend enough to move to manage the the process and then but not to overspend it yeah and so the total amount that um is requested today is forty nine thousand nine hundred dollars that's yes. um that's thirty four thousand nine hundred for the geotechnical engineering services the stormwater services and the and consulting services and then it, that and it additional 15,000 for the environmental services contingency, um, which is what Chin was talking about. And so again, 49,900, we, we will, we have this in the unallocated funds. Is that right, Chin? Uh, yes, that, that will be uh, coming from the unallocated, uncommitted amount. And just so roughly that uh, we will be, uh, we still have about, um, if we, if we spend the, the uh, these two, if we spend the full amount, we were still in the high 200s, uh, 200, 275 plus thousand dollars left in the uncommitted amount as of now. In the budget. In the budget, out of the $1.7 million. Great. Nearly $300,000 of uncommitted amount. Uh, as of today, prior to the approval of these these two uh, these items, uh, we stand at two hundred and uh, no three hundred and fifty two thousand dollars is the current uncommitted amount. And so after this, it would be just under three. Just shy, yes, just shy under of three hundred thousand in a uncommitted. Does anyone have any questions about this um, proposal? Yeah, this is this is Brian. Rob, just a question: if in this round of soil borings, should we encounter, say, very hard granite in the areas where foundations are going in the building, would there be additional vest investigation now, or would that be later on in the process? Uh, the reason is to, you know, if we need to allocate money for additional removal of especially very hard granite. I think we would take the information that we gathered from this round and make a series of assumptions um, in our cost estimating package, um, you know, based off of that information. Um, like Chin said, you know, we've got a limited amount of money that we want to allocate right now before a vote. So um, I, I think with this round, we would have um, enough information to for us to you know, again, make some uh, assumptions on where uh, the granite is expected to be. And, you know, again, with the, with the cost estimating, it's going to be an allowance that the cost estimator is going to allocate to this and say, well, based on this information, you know, um, we're estimating X number of cubic yards of ledge removal. Um, I mean, we can, we can uh, poke holes all the way, <laughs> you know, through I, the I, entire I, site. And, 
I, I think maybe uh, adding a little bit more information is just that us, us the this round of design and uh, and the uh, design team would move forward with a, uh, a and come back with an estimate, and then looking at the size of the cost of the estimate on the, the that is put in on the ledge removal, we will if the if the design is so that and and that we do not need to. Uh, remove huge amount of ledge then we may not do additional then the, the the additional work will be lower but if the ledge removal line item is a fairly large number then it is definitely worth the investigation to really nail down exactly what that is in the next phase and then i think this is uh um the we probably we do not exactly have the time to do another round because uh, Rob really need to finalize the design by November in order for us to hit the schedule. So that's part of sort of we anticipate that um, the that we won't be able to do everything this round uh, in terms of the subsoil investigation. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Yeah, one thing. So seeing the school is starting up hopefully in two weeks, maybe three. The, um, a couple of your stormwater are right where the kids play. Um, there's a hard top stormwater drill, and then it's out by the field. I just want to make sure that we're aware and cognizant. Yeah, we've uh, indicated for the geotech engineer to locate those test pits and um, in the areas that are not in the paving or the you know, a paved area. Um, so they would be doing it just adjacent to that. You know, those locations on that plan are kind of approximate. And so he's going to field modify um, to be, so it's not impacting the play areas. It, it should be possible to do that by excavating and then backfilling uh, and restore it to reasonable condition. Uh, and I think we only have two of those locations that is in the current uh, and we are aware of that. And so we'll work with the geotechnical engineer and and um, um, and Sarah and Ken to uh, coordinate that effort before. And then uh, those are a proximal location. And then we we certainly can look at when we get into the field exactly what is the best <laughs> location so that it minimizes the impact to the operation of the school. All right, I just want to throw it. Oop, let me just throw in the um, that black top is black top because at one point that's where the fuel oil tanks were. I'm I see. assuming that they removed them, but um, it wouldn't be the first time on the PBC we've been surprised by extra stuff that we thought was uh, that. Yes, that is a concern that we have as well. And and so I, uh, knowing that piece of information, we will uh, coordinate with our geotechnical engineer to carefully approach that topic and then make sure that we get the information we want and so that we can uh, manage the process. Yes. Thank you. May I, you're muted. Sorry, any other discussion? <laughs> no. All right, are we ready to vote? Can I get a motion on the approval of this geotechnical engineering proposal for 49,900? So moved. Can I get a second? Uh, may I, do you want to do this as a two vote or one vote? Um, can I do it as a one? I'd rather do it as a one. Then the there, there's, is an 40. there's an additional 16,500 for the uh, allowance on top of the 49. There is. Did I miss that? I believe that's the way it's written. So the total is actually sixty-five thousand. I don't see that uh, in the proposal. Uh, so there's there's a two separate proposals in there that uh, I asked Rob to break it down to to the uh, the the uh, into two of them. I see the first one for fifth. The first one which shows the fifteen thousand one. Okay, fifteen. Right. It's a it's right. a fifteen plus. Uh, it's total of sixteen. Um, Sixteen five is supposed to be the to total for the. I see fifteen. Oh, and then I okay. see. I mean, I'm looking at. I'm, I'm looking at the PDF that was attached, and that says total budget is forty nine thousand nine hundred. Maybe that. I thought I forwarded the correct information, but um, 
Let me pull that up. Sorry, guys. I'll show you some on this. I'm looking at page five of the second proposal. The first proposal is just for the 15,000 on page five of that proposal. And the second proposal shows both the 15,000 and the 349. So there's, there's, there should be amendment four, uh, which has, which is a total, combined total of 41,690. And then amendment five on the cover page, right. 16, 16, five. I don't see the backup for those though. I see amendment five only. Am I missing something? Somehow amendment, um, I have only amendment five. Rob, if you have that, can you mm -hmm. post that? Yeah. Can you bring it up? Oh, sure. I can put it up on the screen. Is that what you want? Right. Yes. So this is uh, amendment four. So this has the uh, tasks one through six, the geotechnical engineering services, stormwater um, and so forth, not to exceed 38,390. And then the elevation spot checks that are related to confirming the geotech borings for a total of 41,690. Okay, so that doesn't match the proposal though. The proposal that I had shows that tasks one through six are 34,900 and the environmental consulting services right. uh, so, 49,900. Um, the, um, the subtlety here is, is that the, this is why I asked Rob to break it in this way is that uh, in proposal, uh, in amendment four, really there's two backup pieces of information because there's an additional $3,300 for the um, uh, uh, survey to locate those points. And then that adds up to the 4690 for the geotechnical work. And for the, for the and then proposal five is the uh, 15,000 plus the markup which is the 16,500 uh, not to exceed um, allowance for the uh, additional geotechnical work for the, this is related to the oil wells that, uh, uh, no, oil tanks that was on site. Okay. Let's, so let's back up here. Let's back up here. So here. we've got tasks one through six, right? And that total in the proposal is 34.9. Correct. Correct. And then you have to add a. Um, and then what the, am I adding? The Rob, go back to the uh, cover page, the which is the thirty-three hundred. It's the survey work to locate those points um, that the the test wells and the, uh, the 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 test pits and the boring locations. I, th I think what, what Shin was trying to do here was to combine all of the, um, some background noise. Yeah, can, you, can you mute if you're not um, speaking? Thank you. Um, so the, the idea, I think what Shin was trying to do here was to include all of the services that were associated with geotech and stormwater, even though they were from two different engineers. I think that's where the confusion was um, to, to to be included into one piece, and then uh, and then the um, and, and then separate out the environmental investigation work 
even though that was done by the same consultant as the borings, extract that out as a separate piece. So that's a standalone item. Okay, but I'm just trying to get into the numbers here. So, all right, so for tasks one through six, we've got $34,900. Right, that's what's in the proposal. Then there's a 10% markup for Dorn Whittier services. So that's 33,490, right? And then there's an additional, are you saying there's additional 3,300 from another engineer for the survey costs? Exactly. Okay, so that's 34. 900 plus I think what would be helpful is if the next time we do this we have this sort of broken out like this so that's how you're getting 41690 correct all right so for the geotechnical proposal I, why don't we do this as two motions for the geotechnical pr proposal can I get a motion to approve the geotechnical proposal for $41,690 that's broken down by $34,900 for the tasks one through six as outlined in the proposal, $3,490 for the Doran Winnier um, administrative cost, and $3,300 for the survey required to perform that work. So moved so, on amendment number four, totaling $41,690. Thank you. Can I second. get a second? Okay. Second. Um, thank you. Brian. Uh, yes, as long as it's clear to uh, Chin and Maya. <laughs> yes, it is clear. I think we'll talk, Chin, about how to rewrite this a little bit differently. Um, okay, uh, Allison had to leave. Chris? Chris, you still there? Yes, yes I am, and yes. Oh, perfect, thank you. Sarah? Yes. John? Yes. Charlie. Yes. Pam. Yes. Abby. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Lemma. Yes. Carol. We may have lost. I think Carol had to drop. Uh, Michelle had to drop. Tony. Yay. Emily. Yes. And Kate. Yes. Great. Okay, now can I get a motion for the second proposal? This is for the environmental work related to the the um, the oil. What do they call them? tanks? <laughs> this is for fifteen thousand. Total is sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. This is amendment number five. Um, that's broken into fifteen thousand dollars as set forth in the proposal, and the fifteen hundred dollar Doran Whittier fee. Again, total $16,500. Can I get a motion to approve this proposal? I would like to um, do that. Amendment number five for not to exceed 16500 Thank you, John. Can I get a second? Second. second. All right. Roll call. Brian. Yes. Chris. Yes. Sarah. Yes. John. Yes. Charlie. Yes. Pam. Yes. Abby. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Lemma. Yes. Tony. Yay. Emily. Yes. Kate. Yes. And Maya is yes. Motion is carried. Okay. Next action item. We are moving over the engineering cost for the revised lot line and moving straight to the Payment of invoices totaling $64,670 for the period ending July 31st, 2020. These invoices are um, one invoice for Compass Project Management for $18,670, one invoice for Doran Whittier for $42,500, and one invoice from Thornton Thomas Setti. This is for the Eversource work that we committed to for $3,500. So again, total of $64,670. Can I get a motion to approve these invoices? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Second. All right, um, Brian. Yes. Allison. Oh no, sorry, Chris. Yes. Sarah. Yes. John. Yes. Charlie. 
Yes. Pam. Yes. Abby. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Lemma. Yes. Tony. Yes. Emily. Yes. Kate. Yes. And Maya is a yes. Motion is carried. Final, uh, not finally, can I get a motion to approve our July 23rd, 2020 meeting minutes? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'll go to the roll call. Uh, Brian. Yes. Uh, Chris. Yes. Sarah. Yes. John. Yes. Charlie. Yes. Pam. Yes. Abby. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Lemma. Yes. Tony. Yes. Emily. Yes. Kate. Yes. And May is a yes. Motion is carried. Last action item is to accept the July 8th, 2020 Sustainability Subcommittee minutes. Can I get a motion? So moved. Okay. Second. 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 Yeah, we got you, Jelly. Any discussion? <laughs> nope. Okay, Brian. Yes. Chris. Yes. Sarah. Yes. John. Yes. Charlie. Yes. Pam. Yes. Abby. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Lemma. Yes. Uh, Tony. Yes. Emily. Yes. Kate. Yes. May is a yes. Motion is carried. All right. Moving on to new business. Is there any new business? Nope. Hearing none, we will move to adjourn. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Can I get a second? Second. No one wants to adjourn. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Uh, no? Okay. Brian. Yes. Allison. Oh, Not sorry. Here. Allison's gone. Chris. Yes. Sarah. Yes. John. Yes. Charlie. Yes. Pam. Yes. Abby. Is Abby yeah. here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Nancy? Yes. Lemma? Yes. Uh, Tony? Yes. Emily? Yes. Kate? Yes. All right, and May is a yes. Motion is carried, and we are adjourned. <laughs>